Welcome. Good morning, everybody. I'm just going to give it a few seconds to let everybody uh, get into the virtual room, but you're all very, very welcome. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for coming along. It just takes a, a few seconds to let everybody slowly but surely uh, into the room. I'll keep an eye on the numbers, but we'll get going uh, very shortly. So was that awkward moment of waiting. A couple of more seconds and then I'm going to start. OK, uh, I think we'll we'll get started now. Good morning again to you all and thank you very much for joining uh, this virtual open day. I'm delighted that you could all come along this morning. My name is Karen Scott, as it says on the slide. I'm the course director. That means I'm responsible for um, admissions, student progression, all things student related while you're on the course. Um, I have a lovely job um, because the best thing about my job is the students. Um, so hopefully I'll get to know lots of you uh, in September uh, uh, when, when some of you uh, join uh, the programme following September even. Um, a very warm welcome once again to you all. Um, I've been at UCL since 2016. Before that, I taught elsewhere. I taught EU and employment law. Before that, I was a solicitor in private practice. And before that, I was a nurse. Um, so I hope that I bring a wealth of experience to uh, my role, to my interactions with students. I sit um, also as a part-time employment judge. So I have really nice conversations with um, the students. As I say, it's the best thing um, about my job. I'm not here today to do a hard sell. I'm here to tell you a bit about the programme for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to move into a Q&A. I want you to go away from this session thinking, I know what to do. I know I've got to do a bit more um, homework, maybe, and, and look some more things up. But I, I can now begin to make an informed decision about where I want to apply to study at university. And I know it's a difficult choice. So hopefully this will help you uh, to do that. Um, the Q&A is open for questions. So if you have questions, please um, put them into uh, the Q&A. I've got some lots of colleagues in the background who will be answering some of those questions in writing. And then um, come the live Q&A part of the session, um, myself and my colleagues were joined by students, by other members of staff, will help to answer those questions. So you get a really good flavour of UCL uh, laws, I hope. Um, having said I wasn't going to do a hard um, sell, um, and I'm not, but the next slide I think is, is just worth um, repeating. Um, uh, an intellectual powerhouse with a world-class reputation. Uh, I really think that if you come to UCL Laws, if you apply to UCL Laws, um, you will learn not just what to think, but you will learn how to think. And I think that really um, sets us apart from some other universities, not all, um, but we we'll really encourage debate and discussion and critical analysis. Um, what's right with the law? What's wrong with it? What should be changed about it? Um, and you will be taught um, uh, by some of the finest legal minds. Um, so I think if you apply to UCL Laws and you come to UCL Laws, you will you'll certainly never be bored. And I think you'll have a fantastic um, uh, experience. It will be hard work. It will stretch you intellectually. It's meant to. Uh, but um, you're all very capable of that. Um, uh, uh, so I hope that many of you will in due course apply to UCL um, uh, laws. I should also say that we're having um, two face-to-face -face open days at the end of June 
uh, the first day of July, so a Friday and a Saturday. So if you are in London or close by, um, have a look on the UCL website and maybe sign up for one of those. That will give you another opportunity to come along, ask all your questions, see the campus um, and get a feel um, for the, the Bloomsbury um, campus. Um, again, uh, um, I, why would you choose UCL Laws? A few comments there. Um, we've just had a new dean appointed um, and we're very pleased that Professor Eloise Scottford um, uh, is our new dean taking over from Pete, um, our previous dean. Um, and um, uh, there's no doubt that UCL Laws is a really excellent place um, to study. You can see a couple of comments there on the slides too from students, former students, um, uh, and I think those are powerful statements and you'll get a chance to ask questions of the students later um, uh, in due course. Um, and that's um, a, another quote from Clement, rather longer, um, but I, uh, Clement um, uh, was on the dual degree programme, the Hong Kong dual degree programme, um, and you can see uh, what he said about Professor um, King, Jeff King, one of our um, academics uh, who's been heavily involved in, in the Brexit um, uh, uh, debates, scenarios. Um, public law uh, is his subject. Public law should never be exciting in my view, but it has been really exciting uh, for the past few years. Um, so uh, you'll never be bored. Um, I, I've said this already, but you will be, you will have to, and you will develop a critical understanding of how the law works, how it might be changed. Um, uh, and if you're in any doubt about where you're going to apply to university, I would suggest one of the starting points is to have a look at the websites of the various law schools and have a look at the academic staff, see what their research um, interests are um, because they're going to be teaching you um, and it's really interesting to just take a look at the academic um, uh, uh, staff's in research interests. Um, you'll be taught uh, by um, uh, uh, the academic staff but we have visiting uh, practitioners teaching too, we have visiting judges teaching too, uh, Baroness Hale uh, uh, is a, a, a member of uh, the faculty since she stepped down as the president of the Supreme Court. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment she's going to be teaching you every day in the classroom, but you, you, you'll hear from her um, and, and she'll, she talks to students. So um, a really exciting place to um, come and study, in my view. Um, I'm not going to say much more about league tables. Um, I, I, you can look at all of those. You can look if you're interested at the UCL institutional plans and strategies. Um, you can um, have a look at the um, outcome of the REF, the Research um, uh, uh, Excellence Framework in 2021, uh, where UCL law uh, excelled. Um, so take a look at our website, please. Take a look at league tables. Uh, the one thing I'd say about league tables is if, if a university is consistently up there in the top echelons, you're on safe territory. Um, so there are other universities up there in the top echelons too. Um, uh, but take a look, have a look around um, uh, the, the information that is available to you. Um, you've got to make that decision in the end. Um, it's worth doing a little bit of homework before you, you decide. Um, I mentioned briefly, and my colleague Alex is here, um, who can talk more to the uh, target laws scheme, uh, but you can see the slide there, um, the, law, the target laws mentoring scheme is a relatively new programme um, for years 12 and 13 students um, with aspirations to join um, a law school. We, we really consider ourselves to be um, and I think this is back to Pete's words earlier, but an inclusive law school. We want students from all over the globe, um, from different backgrounds, um, and, and, and we do that well. So um, if, if you think the target law programme uh, is, is potentially applicable to you, um, uh, more information available on the website. 
Um, I've mentioned the academic staff, and, and I don't apologize for repeating um, again that they are, well, they're just fantastic. Um, they are experts in their field. Um, uh, they will be teaching you in the classroom um, and engaging with an academic in an area of their research interest um, is a fantastic opportunity to learn, to think, to criticise, to analyse, um, etc. So do take a look, as I said, at the, the website. I want you to go away um, before you make your decision uh, with that kind of information. Um, I think because we're in London, we, we have an advantage sometimes in that there are many judges, many practitioners close by, and they're happy and willing to come and uh, teach and or talk uh, to our students. Um, so I'll talk more in a bit about um, the careers events that the Law Society runs in conjunction with, uh, run in conjunction with the faculty. Um, but we have no shortage of practitioners and judges who are happy to come um, and talk to students, judge competitions. So the, um, the, the final of the Supreme of the senior mooting competition was held in the Supreme Court recently, um, judged by um, a, a senior judge. So really exciting. That's an advantage of, of London, I suppose. Take a look at the news sections too um uh, on the UCL Laws website and and you'll find information about online talks that might be happening now fewer of those will happen over the summer months um out of term time but keep an eye um because there are lots and lots of talks online that you you might want to join um and 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 listen to um what's important what's different what is unique about UCL laws. Um, I think our size, we're small. We've resisted the temptation to grow. Uh, so about 200 students in each academic year um, means that you're a, a, a small community in a big UCL. That has many advantages. Uh, we are a community in law, um, the faculty buses from morning to night. We're all housed in one building, Bentham House. There's a picture there on the screen. Uh, that means the students can socialise in there, they can study in there, um, they, they, they can have all their uh, mooting competitions, careers events in Bentham House. Um, so it does make for a very buzzy um, faculty um, and that's good. It's exciting, it's vibrant. Um, and then you've got UCL, the bigger campus, with all the advantages that that brings to you, um, the student union, the wider student union, and all the activities they offer. Um, uh, uh, and you get to know other students. I, I think that's a really good thing. You meet students from all the faculties, um, uh, as well as law. Um, and then you've got the wider career service, as well as the law's career service. So you, you really do have the best of the best of all worlds. Um, we um, teach in um, uh, small groups. Uh, let me just go to that slide for the moment. So um, about 195 students, as I said, 200 students a year. We teach in groups of nine students in tutorials. That's a question worth asking as you go around various opera, uh, open days at other universities. What size is your cohort? What size of um, tutorial groups do you, do you teach in? Um, we think nine's a good number. If you go to Oxbridge, you'll be taught in groups of one or two, um, and some of you will thrive on that. I, I think nine would have suited me better. There's nowhere to hide. You've got to go along to that class prepared, willing, able to speak. But um, because there's nine of you, uh, I as the teacher am facilitating the discussion um, in a tutorial. It's very much the students engaging in that um, conversation about whatever topic it might be. Um, 
So uh, questions to ask uh, around the various law schools that you're going to think, think of applying to. Um, all of our academics and our professional services staff are housed in Bentham House. That means it, it's a community. Um, I work with the finest professional services and academic staff and I can honestly say that the professional services team is the most committed team I've ever come across. They are really, really uh, they're there to look after the students' interests. Um, uh, they're a fantastic team. So really very much a community um, in, in Bentham House. Um, I skipped over the previous slide, just going uh, back to uh, the previous slide. Um, again, you can find all of this information on the website. I'm not going to dwell on it, but we offer a number of programs. I'm sure you're all, um, you've all had a look. I hope you've all had a look at what, what's on offer. Um, the first um, uh, programs there are um, programs you apply to via UCAS uh, and or um, for the dual degree with Hong Kong or uh, Cologne, uh, students can also apply uh, via um, Hong Kong or Cologne, but you can only apply one way, either via UCAS or via Cologne or Hong Kong. Um, the latter two programmes are not programmes you can apply for via UCAS, uh, but um, in due course, um, when you're um, in the faculty, um, students can choose in their second year to apply to the dual degree with um, Columbia Law School or uh, the Law with Another Legal System. Uh, so you spend a year in the uh, other jurisdiction um, studying their um, law, legal system. OK, um, I wanted to say a little bit about the programme. Um, and I wanted to start by saying that I, I, we're really proud of our Laws Connections programme and for good reason. You start the programme with a, a fairly intensive two week induction programme called Laws Connections. But the really innovative, exciting thing about the programme is you only study in the classroom uh, in Laws Connections. We don't send you home during that induction period to to look at material overnight, because we know you've just joined the university, you're settling into London to your accommodation, you're attending freshers events, you're getting to know um, other students, and you need the space to do that. So best of both worlds, um, you come along um, uh, uh, and you work hard in the classroom, but you have time um, uh, other times of the day and evenings to um, uh, do everything else that you'll be getting on with at that stage. Our Laws Connections programme uh, is, is a way of setting you up with the skills that you are going to need for the rest of your programme. I'm not saying you'll master those skills during the programme, you won't, but you'll begin to think about how to read cases, uh, academic articles, uh, write an essay, answer a problem question, do a presentation, et cetera, et cetera. So it would just begin to introduce you to all the skills you're going to need to develop throughout the three or four years of your law degree. Uh, we run the Laws Connections programme through um, a social problem. So a case study, uh, they vary year on year. Um, but you'll, you'll be allocated to a case study and then you'll read a case in connection with that case study or um, a, a read an academic article, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll be taught by a group of, a wide group of teachers, which will include academic staff, PhD students, third year students. Another way of you getting to meet lots of the, the people that are going to be important to you throughout your, your time at UCL um, Laws. So it, it's a fantastic programme um, and it really sets you up well for the rest of your um, law degree. Um, I'm not going to say very much about this because um, 
all of the information again is available on the website, but I want you to, to go away and have a look. Um, so um, in year one at UCL Laws, you'll do um, the subjects listed there. If you're on a law with a language programme, you'll study um, in addition the law with uh, the legal system of that uh, particular jurisdiction. And then in year two, you'll do the rest of the foundation modules. Then you might go abroad if that's applicable to you. If you're on a dual degree programme, you'll go abroad for the next two years. Um, if you're on a law with a language or a law with another legal system, you go abroad for a year and then you come back for your final year. Now, we choose at UCL Laws to um, make sure you study the essential topics that all law students will end up studying in years one and two. Some universities, you might choose some options in year two. Um, we say, no, nope, you're going to choose your options in year three. I, I, we debate this every, every so often, but actually I think it's not until you've done, I don't know, property two that you think, mm, actually, I'd like to, that's a topic I really enjoyed. I'm going to study unjust enrichment or whatever it might be. So no choice year one, two, then you move into your final year. There's a long list of options. Again, they're all listed on our website. There's no need to be scribbling any of this uh, down, but a long list of options that are all run every year. It depends on, on sabbatical leave of academic staff, for example, but there's a huge range um, and some really interesting and exciting topics there. Um, Legal Shakespeare was a new module, for example, that was introduced this year and the students um, went off to the Globe Theatre one evening um, to watch, I don't know what it was, Macbeth maybe, um, uh, but a really innovative, exciting uh, new module. So a wide range of topics there. It wasn't until I got to my final year of university and I studied what was called labour law, employment law, um, that I thought, yep, that's what I want to do. I want to be an employment lawyer. And, and uh, that's what I did uh, when I was in practice working for a firm of a trade union firm of solicitors. So uh, it will inspire you um, to, to, to your future. And I know not all of you will want to be lawyers uh, and that's good. Um, so some of you will want to go into many and varied careers, but law is such a good degree for developing all of those transferable skills that employers value in due course. Um, I've just put up here an enriched learning experience, and this is something that the students will talk more about, uh, perhaps, but alongside your studies, you're going to be engaging in other activities, be it sport, be it extracurricular like mooting, debating, mock legal arguments, debating, um, negotiating, interviewing, uh, etc. That's our moot courtroom. Um, uh, uh, and it looks like the students are uh, mooting um, uh, in, in that room. Um, so uh, studying law is hard. It's also fun. It's a really interesting, exciting subject. Uh, but alongside that, you will want to do other uh, important activities of your choice. Um, and there are many, many to choose from. Uh, the one thing you won't find is a a lack of choice. Sometimes I think it's hard to decide which uh, to choose whilst being sensible about which ones, um, how many activities uh, you can participate um, in. But a really wide range. And again, if you have questions about that, you can ask um, the students in due course. Our Access to Justice, Centre for Access to Justice, and my colleague Ram is here, uh, who can talk more about the centre and pro bono activities if, um, if you have questions about that. But again, have a look at the website. Um, I think UCL Law's uh, Centre for Access to Justice is unique in that it has been awarded legal aid contracts in uh, housing and community care law. Um, it runs cases from beginning to end um, and students uh, work volunteer in the clinic and one of the final year modules um, is a module combining the study of 
um, a, a theory around access to justice, together with um, volunteering, working in the clinic as part of that particular module. And uh, the clinic is based out in East London, uh, near, near the Olympic Park in Newham, uh, a, a deprived borough in London, where there are lots of people who need uh, the, the advice that the clinic provides. It's a really important resource to the community, but also to the students. Um, so a fantastic opportunity to work in the clinic and or um, engage in pro bono act other pro bono activities. Um, so, um, I don't know, going along to the magistrate's court and um, uh, recording what went on um, for a project about um, uh, what happens at magistrate's courts, um, human, teaching uh, school students human, about human rights, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Huge range. Again, website, pro bono, UCL, laws, and you'll see the huge range of, range of activities available to you. Um, student support, uh, I'm joined by my colleague Natalie today, who uh, is one of the student advisors, uh, and she, she will no doubt um, uh, introduce herself in due course. Um, Natalie is the year one student advisor. Um, that means that she is responsible for year one students. She will contact year one students. She won't let you flounder on your own she'll contact you she'll talk to you she'll make sure you're you're understanding what's going on that you're happy that things are going right um and natalie and i will support um all students um through year one two and final year um so you'll never be left without some support there when you join ucl laws the law society will appoint you a law family, a couple of senior students to help support you uh, into laws. The UCL central team will appoint a transition mentor. Um, again, another senior student to help you transition to university. It's hard. It's, it's all new. Uh, you're making new friends, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You need uh, that support. And I think we, we do that um, well. Um, we've got a careers consultant so for those of you who think you want to be lawyers Stephen is a great resource for those of you who think you don't want to be a lawyer we've got the central UCL uh, careers resources available to you um, I'm always around um, and I get to meet as I said at the beginning uh, the students during the course of their degrees um, uh, my office is in Bentham House and I meet with students um, often so lots and lots of student support. You'll be appointed an academic mentor, a mentor, a member of academic staff who will help support you um, uh, throughout your um, programme. I've mentioned the Law Society, um, and if you have a look again on the web, you can see the information about the Law Society. Just search UCL Law uh, Society. Um, but they really are a fantastic um, law society. They put on weekly careers events, all the competitions run, uh, like mooting, debating, et cetera. Uh, lots of social activities, lots of networking activities. Uh, they really are um, a great um, uh, society. Um, OK, applying to law, and again, um, Lots and lots of information available to you on the LAWS website, UCL's website, and then UCAS and the LNAT website. So you've got to go away. I cannot, in the time available, be telling you everything that you need to know. But I can tell you that you need to look at the UCAS website. Um, if you're applying to UCL and eight other universities uh, that I'm not going to list, um, you have to do the LNAT the um, laws admissions test. Now, the LNAT website is excellent. You need to go onto the LNAT website and just begin to think about what the test involves. It doesn't involve any knowledge of law. It's a two-part test, part MCQs, part um, essay. 
Uh, you go along to a test center and for 95 minutes, you read passages of text and answer multiple choice questions. And then for uh, the next 40 minutes, you write an essay in answer to a question. You get a choice of three questions. Now, you're all brilliant students. You can all write essays. You can all read passages of text. It's not um, testing your ability to, uh, it's not testing your legal knowledge. It's testing your um, an analytical um, uh, ability, your deductive abilities, et cetera, et cetera. It's another tool, if you like, in our toolbox to help us select um, students. It's a really hard thing to do. Um, you're all fantastic, um, but in the end, uh, we only have a couple of hundred places every year. So we have to have those tools available to us alongside your personal statement, um, your reference and your UCAS application uh, more generally. So um, the LNAT, uh, you have to pay for, but I don't want any of the students here uh, who think, gosh, um, 75 pounds is a lot of money and it is a lot of money um, to go away thinking that that means I can't apply to laws. You can. Uh, there are bursaries uh, available um, through the LNAT um, uh, 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 group. Um, so don't go away thinking that puts me off um, money. The cost of that test should not put any of you off. Um, take a look at the on that bursary information. Um, please keep an eye on the UCL website, um, which will no doubt be updated, which will be updated uh, in advance of the application season opening uh, in the next uh, academic year. The dates change sometimes, the deadline by which you have to apply to laws or UCL generally, um, and the date that you have to complete the LMAT by. So please keep an eye um, on, on the website uh, just to make sure that you don't miss any of those um, deadlines. Um, the LMAT uh, test, I don't think, uh, so sometimes students say, can I be coached? Should I go away and sign up to a coaching programme? Uh, my answer to that is no, I don't think you need to. But I do think that you need to, um, you can practice. You can go onto the LNAT website and do simulated tests. You can read a broadsheet newspaper uh, and think about your argumentation skills. Look at the comments section, look at the opinion sections. Um, what arguments, how are they constructing the argument? Um, how have they addressed the counter argument? Have they reached a conclusion? Uh, did I agree with it? Doesn't matter if you agree with it. It's about the process, the argumentation um, process. That's what we're going to be looking at in terms of um, when we look at your essays, um, your ability to construct an argument, address counter arguments, uh, reach a conclusion. Um, uh, because ideally, lawyers don't sit on the fence. Um, they, they have a view. Um, so some homework to do there, I'm afraid. Um, there's lots of advice on the website. I'm not going to go through any of this, but you've got to go away and take a look. And if you can, come and talk to us if you want or email us um, if you've got questions. Um, some of you might be eligible for the Access UCL scheme. So again, this is back to our inclusive law school. We want everyone to feel able to apply to UCL laws. Um, so um, uh, uh, if the contextual law scheme, the access UCL scheme applies to you, again, Google is your friend, um, take a look uh, and see whether that's applicable. A different um, offer um, if you uh, uh, fall within the contextual um, scheme. So take a look, please. Um, I'm not going to dwell on this. Entry requirements. Um, <laughs> It's all available on the website. So um, A star AA uh, generally, contextual BBB. Um, but, but that's for A levels. Uh, you'll all be doing a variety of different uh, courses like the IB. You might be studying abroad. So you've got to go away and look at the 
uh, the information available uh, to you. Um, uh, uh, please, um, I, I'm conscious that, that I'm not giving a lot of time to, to these slides, but that's because all the information is available on the website. Um, the selection process. I think what's important to um, say here is you're going to have to do a personal statement. Um, so you'll do the LNAT, you'll do your UCAS application, and through that, we will be able to assess your um, motivation for studying law. Um, your informed interest in current affairs will probably come through in your LNAT essay. Um, so it, although it might not be a topic you're totally familiar with, the more of an informed interest in current affairs, the better. And you can practice the LNAP by getting your teachers, your parents, your friends to set you essay questions. Um, should women over 45 have the right to IVF treatment? And you sit down and you write an essay for 30 minutes, five minutes to plan, five minutes to proofread. Um, practice. You don't need to be coached. You don't need to pay for coaching, but practice. You all write lots of essays. Um, so I, I don't think it'll, it, it's not an insurmountable challenge for any of you. Um, but we will assess all of these things through your application, including the LNAT. Um, just a word about your personal statement. Um, your personal statement, I think, is the word your. Um, sometimes I feel that I read personal statements where a candidate says, I read... I don't know, To Kill a Mockingbird, and then I read um, Letters to a Law Student, um, and then I read The Rule of Law, and actually I don't know anything about the candidate, and I don't know anything about why those particular texts inspired the student. What was it about that court visit, or that reading, um, or that work that you do in Tesco, um, on the customer complaints helpline. What is it about those activities that inspired you, motivated you to study law? And tell me a little bit about you, um, your experiences, your challenges, your, your, your life that has inspired you to study law. Let me get to know you a little bit, because in the end, uh, I we're deciding why you are the right student to study at UCL Laws. Now, you're probably all right to study at UCL Laws, but in the end, we have to select, sadly. So um, just go away again. The, the UCAS website is full of a wealth of detail about writing personal statements. Take a look at it and begin, you know, I, I'm a great believer in, in just beginning to jot down ideas. It doesn't matter in what order, how you write them out, but eventually you will construct from all those ideas your personal statement. So it's worth just beginning to think about that um, now. Um, it's, you know, it's your personal statement in the end. So you need to begin to think about that. And no doubt you can talk to your schools and as I say, have a look at the UCAS website. Um, if you're here and you're thinking, mm, I might want to study law, but I'm not quite sure, um, then go away and do, you, do your homework obviously, uh, again. Um, but I've just put on the next few slides, and I'm hoping that maybe the slides like these ones can, can go somewhere that students can access. I'll have to check whether that's possible. But um, there's lots of inspiration out there about the law. Um, uh, Take a look. Um, I've just listed various books there, some, all of which are fantastic books. There are many other fantastic books um, out there um, uh, uh, to have a look at. Um, I list uh, there some podcasts, Parliamentary Select Committee, almost as good as Netflix sometimes, um, uh, watching a, a Select Committee meeting, and many of our academics have appeared on those select committees over the years. I'm a great um, podcast fan, um, and I'm a bit um, obsessed at the moment with the post office scandal, uh, which is truly a scandal. Um, but there's a lot going on around the post office scandal. Um, there's a lot of really good podcasts out there. Um, and then a lot of good blogs. Um, 
one of our um, uh, uh, professors, Stephen Vaughan, gave a lecture, his inaugural recently, which is on uh, the UCL Law's website, um, The Unethical Environmental Lawyer. Um, that should pique your interest. And Alison, uh, one of our other academic members of staff, <coughs> excuse me, um, has made a short uh, documentary film recently, um, again, um, Reclaiming Now, which uh, I think if you Google, you will find. Um, and then Twitter, I'm a great fan of Twitter too, just because I think it kind of gets you into a topic, you see a snippet and you think, oh, that's something I'd like to take away and look at further. So you don't need to take these names down again, but lots of academics at UCL are on Twitter, you know, Jeff and public law, um, uh, Pete uh, and EU law, Hazel, access to justice, et cetera, et cetera, Stephen, environmental law and lawyers ethics. Um, uh, so follow some of them, look on the law's website, see the names, you can find people on Twitter. I think it just gives you an introduction to various topics. Um, and similarly, lots of non-UCL laws people available uh, on Twitter. Um, so take a look. Um, uh, the, the names there are no more than uh, kind of people that came to mind that I follow. Uh, there are hundreds of lawyers out there um, tweeting. Um, uh, uh, so lots of, of good stuff going on. Um, if you follow Joshua, uh, the legal commentator, you can't go far wrong and you'll get lots of leads uh, from Joshua. Um, take a look on the website, UCL Laws and UCL websites in terms of uh, what scholarships and bursaries um, are open to students. Um, the information will be updated for the 2024, 20, et cetera, cycles um, as we go along. Uh, but take a look at the information. Uh, the Opportunity Scholarships, for example, provide a student with an annual um, a, a bursary of £15,000 uh, towards uh, their maintenance, et cetera, uh, costs. Uh, career paths, I'm not going to say very much more about that right now, but I know you don't all want to be lawyers, and that's a good thing. Um, so uh, it's good that some of you do, but some of you won't. NGOs, politics, government, um, civil service, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Huge range of careers, banking open to law students um, uh, uh, in due course. Um, life as a law student always looks relaxed like that. Um, uh, that's our new student centre, which is a fantastic place for students to study. I, I, it's open 24 hours a day. I'm never quite sure that people need to study at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, but nonetheless, students tell me that they do. Uh, and it's open to students 24 hours. Don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, we're going to move to the Q&A part of the session uh, now. Um, I hope you'll apply to UCL Laws. But wherever you go and study, wherever you go and um, uh, study in due course, uh, in relation to your exams too, if you've got exams coming, good luck. Um, uh, uh, I hope that we see many of you at, at UCL Laws in due course. Uh, so having gone on for a bit longer than I meant to, I'm now going to introduce um, the panel or they're going to introduce themselves. So I'm going to start with my colleague, Karen. Hi everybody, thank you Karen and welcome everybody. Um, my name is Karen, I'm one of the undergraduate programme managers in the Laws Faculty. Um, so I've got the job of, sort of overseeing uh, primarily the programme side um, of what we do and uh, leading a um, team of some incredibly brilliant um, professional services colleagues. Um, who are all there to support all of our students. Um, so welcome, and I'll pass on to Desiree, um, and then we'll come back to some questions in a few minutes. Thank you, Karen. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, my name is Desiree, and I'm the Undergraduate Admissions and International Programs Officer for the Law's Faculty. Um, so I will be supporting you during your um, application. Um, when we review your applications and if you do choose to come I will also be supporting your journey to um, study abroad with us. And Natalie? 
Thanks, Karen. Thanks, everybody. Hello. Um, it's really great to be talking to you today. I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting some of you in person. So as Karen said, I support the first years uh, during your transition into your undergraduate studies. I can support you with anything that comes up, um, how it is to be a student at UCL, a student in London. Um, I look after your well-being. I take an interest in your student experience. I get to know you as a person. Um, and I can help you identify solutions to questions and challenges that you might encounter. It can be difficult transitioning. Just know that you've always got somebody um, who you can meet with as often or as, as little as you like, but I will be reaching out to all students at some point. Um, so yeah, I just hope that you've um, been able to get lots of information this morning. And, and as I said, looking forward to hopefully meeting some of you. Thank you, Alex. Hi everyone, yeah, my name is Alex White. I'm the widening participation officer for the Faculty of Laws. Um, that means I'm running the target law program that we're currently piloting this year. Um, hopefully get to meet some of you when you come to study at UCL Laws. Thank you, Ram. Hi everyone, my name is Ram Sabaratnam. I'm the projects coordinator at the Center of, uh, for Access to Justice, which Karen has spoken about. I'm basically responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the center and really look forward to sort of answering any questions that are pro bono related, or you know, if you have questions about placements you might do, cases you might work on, I'm here to answer all of that. Thank you. Charlotte? Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Charlotte and I'm currently a final year student, um, LLB student at UCL. So I'll be graduating soon and uh, I'm an international student from Hong Kong. Thank you, Daisy. Hi everyone, um, I'm Daisy and I'm a first year student on the Law LLB course. Thank you. Aaron. Hi everyone, I'm a second year um, from the UK and I'm also on the LLB Law course. Thank you, Meryl. Hi, I'm Meryl. Um, I'm, I'm a second year LB student and also the incoming diversity inclusion officer. So if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you. Ruby. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruby. I'm a second year and I actually study environmental geoscience, but I'm the affiliate rep in the Law Society. Thank you. And Vanessa. Nope, no Vanessa. Okay, uh, thank you all very much for joining us. Um, my colleague Karen is going to um, look at the questions in the chat and we'll answer some of those now. Hopefully not me, I've done enough talking. Um, hopefully that everyone else. Yes, thank you, Karen. Um, I think the Q&A chat has been really busy and I know quite a lot of the questions have been answered already, um, but there are a few um, that we'd like to put to the panel. Um, the first one is, I think, one of the most important ones of all. Um, a student has, or a prospective student has asked um, to know about a typical weekly snapshot of a law student. Um, so perhaps one of our students on the panel would like to answer that one. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I don't mind answering this question. Um, so very briefly, obviously, you're going to be doing a lot of things in a week uh, when you're studying it here at UCL Laws, but uh, just very briefly, um, from Monday to Friday, we have lectures and tutorials. And um, here at UCL Laws, I think we have um, a sufficient amount of uh, contact hours um, where we get to see professors, listen to lectures and, uh, you know, tutorials, participating in uh, tutorials with other students. Uh, but we also have a lot of time to, you know, self-study to prepare for these lectures and tutorials. So um, uh, it's a lot of um, self-study needed. You do your own readings before you at attend class, hopefully. Um, outside of these um, moments, you you actually do have a lot of um, time where you can you know, decide how you allocate your time. So for myself, I spend quite a lot of time in the past few years participating in law society events. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys have questions relating to, you know, how to get to know lawyers, how to socialize, how to um, learn more about career path. So this is a really great opportunity to, you know, spend time, participate in 
career events uh, where you get to listen to panelists who come from top law firms, who um, come from very, very prestigious barristers chambers. And usually after these kind of events, you get to socialize with them a bit, speak to them about their career, ask follow-up questions. Um, outside of these career events, I also take part in mooding competitions. Uh, in my first year, it's my first time um, ever participating in debating, mooding, and I find them really, really exciting. Um, there's a lot of internal and external mooding opportunities where you get to be judged by actual judges who are pressing judges or pressing lawyers, and you get really good feedback from them. And you learn how to you know, develop your presentation skills and uh, how to be a very good speaker. Um, some of the essential skills. And on the weekends, you know, uh, springtime, during springtime and autumn in London, they're beautiful. And uh, yeah, I, I always go picnic with my friends, with my law family quite often. Um, as Karen said, you'll be allocated to a law family in the first year. And uh, you get to be matched up with seniors and your um, batchmates and you guys, depending on your law family's dynamic. Um, I'm a law mother this year uh, with a friend and we we together have uh, four law kids and yeah, we, we do hang out quite often. Um, so this is how a week in my UCL life looks like. Um, certainly it's different for everyone, but I, I find it very interesting and I really, really enjoy it. Thank you, uh, Charlotte, that was really useful. And I can see there's another question about snapshot of a typical timetable. Maybe if I just very quickly answer that question in terms of year one, um, four two-hour lectures a week, plus two uh, tutorials a week, plus self-study. So I reckon if you treat a law degree a bit like a working week, I know that sounds hard sometimes um, when students start at university, but that leaves lots of time uh, for all the other activities um, in the evenings, um, weekends as well. Um, so quite a lot of independent self-study as well as your lectures and your tutorials um, each week. Thank you. Um, brilliant, thank you. And thank you, Charlotte. Um, got a couple of questions around assessment. Um, so um, one of the students has asked how students are assessed and does the first year result count? Um, certainly there are different methods of assessment within um, the department. So there are coursework, uh, take home exams, there are oral presentations, there are controlled conditions exams, um, various different forms of assessment. Um, and the first year result uh, doesn't count towards the um, the final classification for LLB law, but does for the dual degrees um, that we offer. Um, and in any case, the um, first year results do count towards other um, non, um, sorry, for not for final results, um, but for other um, opportunities like um, internships, as far as my understanding goes. Um, Karen, is there anything you wanted to um, add to that? No, I think at the moment all the exams are online, but uh, I, I, there is no guarantee that continues all be online. We might go back to the pre-COVID days where we have some exams in person as well. So we have a really wide, diverse mixture um, of exams. But please don't get too bogged down in exams yet. We're, you haven't started yet. Too soon to start worrying about exams. Um, the Definitely. students are in the, are in the thick of their exams at the moment, which is why I'm particularly grateful to them for joining. Um, but yeah, thank you, Karen. No, thank you. Um, so I was hopping around. There's so many questions to answer. So the next one on the list um, is um, from a somebody who's asked uh, what is the advantage of choosing the degree program for both UCL and HKU um, what would be the difference if they applied just to study law at UCL uh, okay I don't think there's anyone here on the dual degree program with HKU but um, if you do the dual degree program it means you're ready to move to the professional stage of training in both jurisdictions uh, whereas if you do the three-year law degree 
programme, you're ready to move to the professional stage of qualifications, qualification in England and or Wales. Um, so it, it, the dual degree programme sets you up for choosing um, where you might want to work um, and or you, I suppose, also then a very attractive to firms who have offices maybe in London and Hong Kong or London and New York, um, for example. Thank you, Karen. Um, jumping on to the next question, um, somebody has asked if it's possible to major or specialise in multiple aspects of law, um, for example, media law and corporate law. Um, our first two years of undergraduate modules are all compulsory. And in the final year, it's possible to choose different options from what is available. Um, I don't know if one of our students wants to pick up on that. I think I can try and answer it. Um, we do have choices in our third year, but if you're meaning qualification wise, I think that's more about the SQE that you'll have afterwards. And it depends on the firm you work at or if you don't want to go to a firm, the chambers you go into. And then your decision kind of is influenced by the years you do after your undergraduate law degree and the availability that you have. Uh, and I, but I don't think you can qualify into multiple places at the same time. But you might do varied work that does stem from different practice areas. Yeah, I, I mean, thanks, Meryl. That was really useful. Um, I, I think the answer is when you're on your law degree, you take your optional modules in your final year and you can study four or more, uh, 120 credits um, of those optional modules. And you can choose whatever you want. You could do Internet law and commercial law and company law, et cetera, et cetera. The choice is entirely yours. And the firms, in my experience, don't mind what you study in your final year. You then go on to do the professional stage of training where you will um, be told by the firms, if you've already got a training contract, what modules you have to study. Um, but, at, but at university stage, um, the choice is really very much yours. When you get into practice, practitioners will usually specialise in one area of law. Um, because there's so much law out there that it's difficult to know the law in more than one area of the law. Um, I hope that helps. Thank you, Karen, and thank you, Meryl. Um, our next question is about internships. Um, so somebody has asked what kind of internships, sorry, internship opportunities are available for law students and or does UCL help students to find internships? So maybe someone from the laws, oh, well, not law sock, but you've all had internships, I suspect. Ron? Yeah, so I was going to chime in there. So there are definitely, you can speak to the careers advisor, Stephen Gurman, who's really wonderful. He can help you find you know, um, jobs over the summer or even part-time jobs during the year that you might want to pursue. Um, I definitely benefited um, by doing that during, uh, during my time as a student. But, um, and this is what the Center for Access to Justice does when it comes to student engagement opportunities, we offer pro bono placements and we have partnerships with legal advice clinics and charities throughout London. Many of these are quite famous. I'm sure you might have heard, for instance, of like Citizens Advice Bureau. We have award-winning legal publications we work with. Um, and so you can actually get involved. Um, I do want to say that they are selective. So, you know, some charities and legal um, law firms uh, are hiring maybe two students, others are hiring um, close to 20 students, and you can have anywhere between 20 to, I mean, 50 students applying for any given placement. So it is competitive. You should be, you know, coming up to me to speak to me if you want to um, apply to any of these, um, these placement opportunities. But yes, there's plenty of ways to get involved um, and many different types of law to sort of expose yourself to uh, during the course of your LLB. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to, because we're uh, just conscious of time. Um, there's a question here. I think this might be a really good one for Natalie to answer. Um, so, um, somebody uh, is an international student and 
is wondering what kinds of support um, the faculty provides to help students away from home um, when studying abroad for the first time? Absolutely, it's a great question um, and it is something that you should be top of your list when thinking about um, the services that universities can provide when you're selecting your university. So uh, UCL has a very specific international student support team um, from pre-arrival, so that's between when you've made your choice and when you uh, join us in September, you will be invited along to uh, lots of different online seminars, I think. Usually the International Student Online Orientation course is in August, and that will be information about what to pack, what to bring, what you need to think about, opening bank accounts, healthcare. Um, it'll also put you in touch with other international students. And so it's very comprehensive, that support. And then when you get to London, uh, there is a whole host of other things that will be going on during induction week. Um, so there's lots of international student events, but it's also really important of, that we, we get you integrated into the faculty. So there'll be so many different activities and socials. Um, you'll meet lots of people in, in the accommodation. Um, you certainly will not be alone. So it is, it is you know, scary. Um, it's a big step. London is a big city, but just be assured that there are lots of different services. And of course, I'm here and no question um, is, is silly or, you know, I, I'm here to kind of guide you through it. And you can definitely go, get in touch with me um, before you get here. If you just drop an email to the Laws Admissions um, email and, and I'll be happy to take that and, and get in touch with you as well. And so just be reassured that um, we're here, we're here to, to help you through um, every, every aspect of your experience. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, agreed, we have really, really strong student support, um, UCL, but specifically within the faculty as well. Um, so please be reassured. Um, we're running out of time, so I'll jump very quickly to the next question. Um, this is more practical about um, applications. Um, somebody has said that they've only seen two official LNATs on the website. Are there other sources where they can find past the LNAT MCQ? Um, is this something, Desiree, are you able to answer this question? Um I would actually recommend um, asking some of our students um, if they have found any any additional resources, because as Karen said, the LNET website is very good, but maybe our students have some recommendations of how you prepared for the LNET, that would be great. Yeah, brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to answer this, because um, I quite recently did the LNET, um, and I found that there's you know lots of free resources and question banks online, um, for example, on the Lawyer Portal website, and I found that really helpful. Um, but also, I'd just like to reiterate that while there are lots of courses and, and things that you have to pay for, it's really about trying to develop skills of critical thinking and analysis. And you can get that from reading articles and just trying to stay up to date with the news. So it's really not something that you need to be spending lots of money on, just like practice and yeah, continued um, working on these skills. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Daisy. Um, kind of follow up to that, um, again, in terms of applying um, to study, um, somebody has asked if we have any recommendations for ways to stand out in personal statements. Um, I don't know if somebody wants to pick up on that. Maybe one of the students could talk about, I don't know what that, I, I think the thing is, I, I, I can't say more often, but it, something about you, something about personal, not just I've read 20 books and shadowed 300 judges, um, for example. Um, we know that most of you won't have had work experience, uh, certainly not legal work experience, but many of you will have had part-time jobs. How, how did that motivate you? How did that shape the person you are, um, for example? Um, lots of you will have faced challenges in your lives. Tell us. Um, uh, uh, th those would be my immediate comments. Do any of the students have any anything that they would add? Because I, I haven't written a personal statement recently. Well, I, I don't mind sharing again if no one else um, 
has anything on their mind right now. But um, yeah, because currently um, or recently, I've been writing um, uh, personal statements for um, masters or postgrad. Uh, that's that's, and then I have to go back to my UCAS uh, personal statement and review and remember. So the thing is, I think. As Karen said, a lot of you probably have done a lot of things already. A lot of you are very outstanding, but what really matters in a personal statement is whether you can show, um, whether you can link all these experience to your skills. So I think, I can't speak on behalf of the admissions team, but I, I think it is very important that you just show them why you want to study here. And, what the admissions team is looking for is probably that what what you're thinking behind so what is going on in your mind what is the motivation behind you doing all these things what have you gotten out of these experience and it's the skills and what you understand from this experience that really matters rather than you doing a hundred internships if you have one or two very strong things that you can share about and what you've gotten out of it, I think that's um, very sufficient. Absolutely, and agreed. If you've watched a case on the Supreme Court website and you were fascinated by that case, or, or maybe you went to your local employment tribunal and you, you were inspired by something the judge did to help the litigant in person present their case, and you thought, actually, that, that really motivated me. I, I want to, to go along. I, I'd like to be on my feet. Uh, representing people, supporting people. Um, it's about what you draw from your experiences, whatever they might be. So think about um, what you've got out of those experiences. I think that's the really important thing. You've all done a million things. What? Um, and, and, you know, I put some of the inspirational things that you might delve into. But again, don't just say, and I've said this, I read To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, it's what drew from that experience um, that is important and I come back to at the risk of re repetition something about you um, it's a personal statement please um, okay thanks sorry Karen yeah no no thank you um, that's all really helpful um, we're really running out of time now so there's time now just for two more questions um, so the first of these um, somebody has asked um, unlike dual degrees, studying the with, so law with French, German or Spanish law, it doesn't provide a qualification in those countries. Um, so they're asking what the benefit is of those courses. Is it purely about language and a year abroad, or is there a shortened path to professional qualification in the second country? Yeah, uh, uh, the latter in some cases, it depends on the country. Um, and I haven't got time. To, I, I tell you one of the really things the important things that students bring back from the year abroad is heightened critical analysis skills. Um, so it definitely benefits them in that respect. But certainly I can talk about France, for example. Um, if you do the licence, you're on your way to being able to qualify uh, into France. Um, so yes and no. It will depend on the jurisdiction. Um, if you want more information about that, please email um, please email us, but it does very much depend on the particular jurisdictions um, that are open to you. And, and I can see on, online that someone's asked a question about the conversion course rather than doing a law degree. You should choose to study what subject you think you'll enjoy. I really mean that. I want you to come to law. That'd be really good. But um, equally, if you think, actually, I'd rather do history first. Great. Go and do history. Then you can do a conversion course. Um, so the choice is there for you. Um, and you've got to decide what's your passion at this stage. I really believe you should enjoy your time at university. You should get lots out of it. And the best way of doing that is to choose a subject that you think you will be passionate and enjoy passionate about and enjoy Karen. Oh, definitely definitely agree um thank you Karen um okay last question I'm afraid um I think we could talk far longer um I'm afraid we don't have time um so this is another practical question it's about internships again I think it was a follow-on from the previous question that we had about that um and this um person has asked um whether international students might be disadvantaged in terms of choices 
compared to UK students? I think the answer to that is no. Uh, safe to say that um, international students can only work, is it 20 hours a week, Charlotte? You might know. Um, uh, your visa restricts how many hours you can work in a particular week. Um, but other than that, no, I, I'm thinking Charlotte will have done some internships as an international student. So, yeah. during, oh, sorry. Sorry, Alvin, please go on. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to say during term time, you can only work um, a maximum of 20 hours a week. And then when it's outside of term time, you're permitted to work full time hours. And so that's roughly how it goes when it comes to um, being on a on a tier four visa. Brilliant. Thanks, Ram. Yeah, I just want to add a point. So um, I've done several internships at um, intern uh, intern legal internship at law firm at um, many, many people pitch at Barristers Chambers, and I've shadowed um, judges here in London. I'm an international student, and um, I don't think it's a problem for me at all. Um, not to mention that you already be very occupied by your um, schoolwork. Um, it's you. I don't think that you want to work too much anyways, but I really don't think it's a huge problem. And um, I think there are tons of um, opportunities here to, to you know, find um, internship. Thank you, Charlotte. And there's one final question about how many students are on the law with French, about 15. Um, okay, thank you all really so much for your questions. Um, Thank you to my colleagues and students for giving up their valuable time today. Uh, really grateful to you all. But I want to end by saying um, really all the very best to all of you, all the best with upcoming exams, if that's relevant, all the best with your application uh, in due course. And we really hope we see some of you at UCL Laws. Don't hesitate to get in touch by the admissions team if you have other questions. Look at the uh, in-person open days, if that's something that you might think you're interested in, if you're relatively close and or in London. It's been a real pleasure meeting you all, and um, I wish you all the very best. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.